Brayla loudly laughed straight into the human ambassador's face, slapping his hands on his knees as he mocked their artwork. Your art looks like it was made by a child, primitive monkey. He had been painting and critiquing the art of the galaxy species for hundreds of years. The Galactic Arts Council had given him his greatest challenge yet, make a masterpiece showcasing the very best of each member species. Humanity was new to the galactic stage, and Brayla did not spare their feelings as he ripped their abstract, surreal art to shreds in his viral video. No skill, no technique, just ugly splatters and blobs. Is this some kind of joke? Humiliated and furious, Earth's artists demanded Brayla visit and see their artwork with his own eyes before condemning the efforts of their entire species. The Council pressured Brayla to accept refusing would be a great insult to the touchy humans. But the arrogant master painter had no intention of being impressed. He would put the humans in their place and prove their art worthless once and for all. Brayla stepped off the shuttle, grumbling under his breath as he looked around at the dull grey spaceport. He had never wanted to visit this backwater planet, but the Galactic Arts Council had pushed him into a corner. Refusing the humans' invitation would have caused a diplomatic incident, and so here he was, ready to put these monkeys in their place once and for all. A lanky man with a scraggly beard approached, waving at the master painter. Welcome, I'm Marcus, curator at the Museum of Modern Art. It's an honour to have you here. Yes, yes, let's get on with it, Brayla said, not bothering to hide his impatience. I don't have all day. Marcus just smiled, unfazed by the alien's rudeness. Of course, right this way, sir. The two made their way out of the spaceport and into the bustling streets of New York City. Brayla was immediately assaulted by a cacophony of noise and a sea of strange faces. He wrinkled his nose in disgust. Everything about this place was so primitive. After a short ride, they arrived at the museum. Marcus led Brayla inside, eagerly pointing out various pieces as they walked through the exhibits. And this one here is by Jackson Pollock a pioneer of the abstract expressionist movement. See how the paint is splattered and dripped across the canvas? It's meant to convey a sense of energy and chaos. Brayla snorted. Energy and chaos? More like a complete lack of skill and technique. My hatchlings could make something better than this. Marcus just nodded, unfazed by the criticism. I can understand why you might see it that way, but the point of abstract art isn't to accurately represent reality. It's about expressing emotions and ideas in a non-literal way. Emotions, Brayla scoffed. Art isn't about emotions. It's about mastery of the craft, about capturing the world as it truly is. This, this is just ugly nonsense. They moved on to the next exhibit, a series of surreal landscapes filled with melting clocks and strange distorted figures. Once again, Brayla was unimpressed. What is this supposed to be? It looks like someone took a perfectly good painting and left it out in the sun too long. This is Salvador Dali, one of the most famous surrealist painters, Marcus explained. His work is all about exploring the subconscious mind and the world of dreams. The distortions and strange juxtapositions are intentional. Drayla just shook his head. Intentional or not, it's still bad art. There's no skill here, no technique, just a bunch of random, meaningless images thrown together. As they continued through the museum, Brayla's critiques grew harsher and harsher. He tore into the cubist paintings of Picasso, calling them a child's scribbles. He dismissed the minimalist sculptures as lazy and uninspired, and he outright laughed at the pop art of Andy Warhol, declaring it not even worthy of being called art. Through it all, Marcus remained patient and soft-spoken, gently offering counterpoints and explanations. But Brayla refused to budge from his position. In his mind, these humans had no concept of what true art was. Their so-called masterpieces were nothing more than a joke, an insult to the very concept of artistic excellence. As they continued through the museum, Marcus gestured towards a special exhibit. I think you might find this next one interesting, Brayla. It's a collection of works by Vincent van Gogh, one of humanity's most celebrated artists. 
Brayla rolled his eyes but followed Marcus into the room. The space was dimly lit, with spotlights illuminating each painting. As he looked around, Brayla's gaze was drawn to a swirling mass of blue and yellow, dotted with stars. He stepped closer, tilting his head as he examined the thick brushstrokes and vibrant colours. This is Van Gogh's Starry Night, Marcus said softly, coming to stand beside him. It's one of his most famous pieces. Brayla didn't respond, still transfixed by the painting. There was something about it, an energy that seemed to radiate from the canvas. He could almost feel the wind whipping through the sky, the stars pulsing with light. Van Gogh painted this while he was staying at an asylum, Marcus continued. He struggled with mental illness for much of his life, and his art was a way for him to express the turmoil he felt inside. Brayla turned to look at Marcus, surprised. He was suffering when he made this. Marcus nodded. Many of his most famous works were created during periods of great emotional distress. He poured his pain and his passion into his art, using it as a way to make sense of his experiences. Brayla looked back at the painting, seeing it in a new light. He had always thought of art as a purely technical pursuit, a way to showcase one's skill and mastery. But standing here in front of this canvas, he was starting to understand that it could be something more, something deeper. They moved on to the next painting, a portrait of a man with a bandaged ear. Once again, Brayla found himself drawn in by the raw emotion of the piece. The man's eyes were haunted, his expression one of deep anguish. This is a self-portrait, Marcus said. Van Gogh painted it after he cut off his own ear during a fit of despair. Brayla shook his head in disbelief. He mutilated himself? Why? No one knows for sure. Some say it was because of a fight with his friend. Others believe it was a symptom of his declining mental state. But what's clear is that he channeled that pain into his art. He didn't shy away from the darkness inside him. He embraced it and used it to create something beautiful. As they walked through the rest of the exhibit, Brayla found himself seeing the paintings in a different way. The bold colours, the frenzied brushstrokes, they weren't just stylistic choices. They were expressions of Van Gogh's innermost feelings. His joys, his sorrows, his fears and his hopes all laid bare on the canvas. For the first time, Brailer understood what Marcus had been trying to tell him. Art wasn't just about technical skill or accurate representation. It was about the human experience in all its messy, complicated glory. It was about vulnerability and honesty, about having the courage to share a piece of yourself with the world. As they exited the exhibit, Brailer was quiet, lost in thought. Marcus glanced at him, a small smile on his face. What did you think? Brayla hesitated, trying to find the right words. I think, I think I'm starting to understand what art can be, what it can mean. He met Marcus's gaze, his expression serious. Thank you for showing me this. I have a lot to consider. As Brayla stood before the final painting in the Van Gogh exhibit, he felt a wave of emotion wash over him. The colours seemed to swirl and dance before his eyes, the brush strokes conveying a depth of feeling he had never encountered in art before. It was as if he could see into the very soul of the artist, could feel the pain and passion that had driven him to create. Marcus, Brailer said, his voice barely above a whisper, I think I need a moment alone, if you don't mind. Marcus nodded, a knowing smile on his face. Of course, take all the time you need. As Marcus left the room, Brailer turned back to the paintings, studying each one with new eyes. He had always prided himself on his technical skills, on his ability to capture the world with photographic precision. But now, he realized that he had been missing something essential. Art wasn't just about replicating reality, it was about interpreting it, about infusing it with meaning and emotion. For hours, Brailer wandered through the exhibit, lost in thought. He marveled at the way Van Gogh used color and texture to convey mood, at the raw honesty of his self-portraits. And slowly, he began to understand the depth of his own arrogance. He had dismissed human art as primitive and unskilled, but in reality he had been the one lacking in understanding. When he finally emerged from the museum, the sun was setting over the city. Brailer blinked in the fading light, feeling as though he had just woken from a long dream. 
His mind was reeling with new ideas and insights, his perception of art fundamentally altered. Over the next few days, Brayler threw himself into exploring the human art world. He visited the Museum of Modern Art again, this time with a more open and curious mind. He lost himself in the abstract expressionism of Jackson Pollock, marvelling at the way the artist used chaotic splatters of paint to convey a sense of raw energy and emotion. At the International Centre of Photography, he found himself deeply moved by the haunting images of war zones and social upheaval. The photographs were stark and unflinching, capturing the pain and resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. And at the Guggenheim, he encountered the thought-provoking installations of contemporary artists, works that challenged his notions of what art could be. Some were interactive, inviting the viewer to become a part of the piece. Others were conceptual, using unconventional materials and methods to explore complex ideas and themes. Through it all, Brayler felt his preconceptions and biases falling away, replaced by a growing sense of humility and appreciation. He had always thought of himself as the ultimate authority on art, but now he realized how much he still had to learn. Human art was not inferior or primitive. It was simply different, born of a unique set of experiences and perspectives. As he sat in a quiet corner of the Guggenheim, surrounded by the strange and beautiful creations of human artists, Brayler felt a sense of excitement building within him. He had come to earth expecting to put the humans in their place, but instead they had opened his eyes to a whole new way of seeing the world, and he knew that he would never look at art the same way again. As the sun rose over the bustling streets of New York, Brayler found himself standing outside the Museum of Modern Art once again. He had spent the past few days wandering the city, his mind a whirl with new ideas and perspectives. But there was one last thing he needed to do before he left Earth behind. Marcus was waiting for him at the entrance, a warm smile on his face. Brayler, I wasn't expecting to see you again. Brayler took a deep breath, stealing himself. Marcus, I need to talk to you. Can we go somewhere private? Marcus nodded, looking slightly puzzled. Of course, follow me. He led Brayler to a small, quiet room off the main lobby. Brayler sat down heavily, his hands clasped in front of him. For a long moment, he was silent, struggling to find the right words. Marcus, he said finally, his voice low and serious. I owe you an apology. When I first came here, I was arrogant and dismissive. I thought I knew everything there was to know about art. But I was wrong. Marcus sat down across from him, his expression open and curious. What changed your mind? Brayler shook his head, a rueful smile on his face. You did. And Van Gogh and Pollock and all the other human artists I've encountered over the past few days. You showed me that art isn't just about technical skill or accurate representation. It's about emotion, about connection, about the human experience in all its messy, complicated glory. Marcus leaned forward, his eyes shining with understanding. I'm glad you were able to see that, Brayler. Human art has always been about more than just pretty pictures. It's a way for us to express ourselves, to share our joys and sorrows, our hopes and fears. Brayler nodded, feeling a lump form in his throat. I see that now, and I'm ashamed of how I acted before. I was so focused on my own narrow view of what art should be that I couldn't see the beauty and power in what you were showing me. Marcus reached out and placed a hand on Brayler's arm. It takes a lot of courage to admit when you're wrong. I'm proud of you, Brayler, and I'm grateful for the time we've spent together. You've taught me things too, you know. Brayler looked up, surprised. I have? Marcus grinned. Of course. Seeing my own culture's art through your eyes, it's given me a new appreciation for it. You've challenged me to look at things in a different way, to question my own assumptions and biases. Brayler felt a warmth spreading through his chest. He had come to Earth expecting to teach these primitive humans a lesson, but instead they had taught him. Marcus, he said, his voice rough with emotion, when I return home I'm going to be working on a new piece, a commissioned work for the Galactic Arts Council, showcasing the best of each member species. Marcus's eyes widened. That's incredible, Brayler, what an honour! 
Brayla nodded. It is. And I want to do it right. I want to create something that truly represents the depth and diversity of artistic expression across the galaxy. Something that incorporates the lessons I've learned here on Earth. Marcus smiled, his expression proud. I have no doubt that you will create something amazing, Brayla. And when you do, I hope you'll share it with us, with humanity. Brayla reached out and clasped Marcus's hand. I will, I promise. As Brayla boarded the shuttle that would take him back to his home planet, his mind was already racing with ideas for his new piece. He knew it wouldn't be easy, blending the styles and techniques of so many different cultures, but he was determined to create something that would showcase the true power of art to unite and inspire. Weeks turned into months as Brayla worked tirelessly on his commission. He poured everything he had learned on Earth into the piece, blending the photorealistic precision of his own species with the emotive brushstrokes of Van Gogh, the chaotic energy of Pollock, and the conceptual daring of contemporary human artists. When the piece was finally unveiled before the Galactic Arts Council, the reaction was one of stunned silence, followed by thunderous applause. The artwork was like nothing any of them had ever seen before, a stunning amalgamation of styles and techniques, a testament to the incredible diversity and depth of artistic expression across the galaxy. In the weeks that followed, Brayla found himself inundated with requests for interviews and speaking engagements. He became a vocal advocate for the value of cross-cultural artistic exchange, urging his fellow artists to look beyond their own narrow perspectives and embrace the beauty and power of difference. And through it all he never forgot the human curator, who had opened his eyes and changed his life. He sent Marcus a hollow message, inviting him to the galactic capital to view the artwork in person. Marcus, overjoyed at the invitation, accepted immediately. As Brayla watched Marcus step off the shuttle, his face alight with wonder and excitement, he felt a sense of deep gratitude and friendship. They had started as adversaries, but through the power of art, they had forged a bond that transcended species and culture. Together, they stood before Brayla's masterpiece, marvelling at the way it seemed to vibrate with energy and emotion. And in that moment, Brayla knew that he had found something far more valuable than fame or acclaim. He had found a true friend and a new way of seeing the universe, one brushstroke at a time. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.